Hello, my name is Amelia Garofoli and I'm here to show you some fun new things with a pocket wheel. Uh, if you've seen my blog, Ask the Bellwether, you know that I've been posting about pocket wheels since they were first created and John McAvoy took them over and he's done a lovely job with them. This is a John McAvoy pocket wheel that I'm spinning on here in my, what I like to refer to as my patchwork configuration. I love all the woods, right? <laughs> So, and this is the standard setup that you have it in, right? You might have a woolly winder, but you have a bobbin. Um, you've got your scotch tension in place. So you've got it tight enough, yep. And um, your, oops, tighten that down. You're off and spinning, right? But that's not what I want to talk about today. <laughs> what I want to do is talk about this lovely new piece John has made, a quill. Quills are really great for spinning cotton and for spinning art yarns. Um, because what they do is they take the pull off. When we're spinning on a bobbin, the yarn is getting pulled toward the bobbin. Okay? It wants to get onto the bobbin, and you've got this uh, scotch tension here to help that pull. And sure, you can decrease the pull, and you could spin cotton on a regular bobbin. Um, but some of the art yarns uh, require that things larger than this orifice uh, get included in the yarn. There's tricky ways to do that. But um, if you just use a quill, then you don't have to be tricky. <laughs> so let's change this over. What I want to do is save the spinning I'm doing. It's some luscious uh, wool, alpaca, and silk blend. So I'll fold it back on itself to hold the twist and wind that onto the bobbin so that it's there for when I'm ready to start again. Then I need to remove the flyer. Untwist that, pull the flyer off. Um, remove the bobbin, so I take the brake band off the bobbin and take the bobbin off. Okay. Now the quill rotates with the flyer. It doesn't technically need the brake band. But you put the quill on and you need one of your axle wrenches. Let's put it down just above the vinyl and tighten it on with the set screw. And then if you want to leave the brake band on, you can, but you want to have it very loose so that it's just sitting in that groove. Okay? Personally, I would rather not risk melting a brake band, which you can do if you spin long enough, fast enough. So I'm going to take it off. So I just unwrap it from there. And this little um, spring here, if I just very carefully bring it around um, and lift it off, I can store it with my flyer. Um, for when I'm ready to go back to spinning with a regular bobbin. Okay. Now, there are lots of kinds of cotton out there, both um, dyed and undyed. I have a natural brown, I have a natural white, I have actual cotton on the seed. Uh, this is a space dyed cotton, and this is a blend of cotton and flax. I like that, it's got a little bite to it. So if I feel like my cotton spinning skills need some practice, I'll pick up something like that with some more bite to help me relearn how to spin cotton. Uh, this is dyed with a Procyon dye. Um, natural dyes work on cotton and direct dyes, and Procyon is a direct dye. Um, and then this is a fun one also for learning because it's a stripe of a natural undyed cotton and a cotton and I think recycled blue jean blend, um, which is cotton. <laughs> Um, but that stripe lets you see the twist that you're putting in your yarn. And then this is a more kettle dyed uh, cotton. I love the jewel tones. You can see I like blue. <laughs> if my clothes didn't give it away. Great. Now you could start directly on the flyer. It's a little tricky. So I want to give you the other way to start, which is um, with a piece of thread. You might wonder why thread, why not some yarn? Um, and that's because cotton typically is spun really fine, and so we want a fine leader. You really want your leader to be similar in thickness to what you plan to spin. Okay? Not too much thinner or the twist won't get past it, um, and not too much thicker or the twist will run past it so quick you don't have time to react with your fiber. Okay? So I'm making a loop at this end. I know it's hard to see because it's thread. <laughs> and then I'm going to lay that loop over um, the quill here and bring the other two ends through that loop. So that's a half hitch. Um, that's only going to be tight one way. So then what I want to do is make a loop in what I call the loose direction here. Make sure I've got the right loose direction um, to make a half hitch that's tight um, the other way. 
Okay, so I've got those two half hitches on. And I know that's impossible to see with thread. It's the same way I put leaders on bobbins. So you might look at my blog. I've got some posts about how to put a leader on a bobbin. And that's with a very nice thick red acrylic. So it's easy to see. Okay. Um, and then I'll push that down to the base. Now, I made this long enough so that it could barber pull up. Like that. So it's now spiraling up. And it's going to come off the tip. And it's when it flicks off the tip. You can kind of see that here in the picture that the twist is actually going up the thread and into my cotton if I had cotton there. <laughs> so let's go ahead. So um, this is cotton sliver. I need to find an edge end. There's got to be an end in here somewhere or a little bit. No, a little bit's worked. There you go. That's a nice, uh, actually, that's a puni. So punis are kind of similar to the sliver, but they're um, not all parallel fiber. The fiber's all wrapped around. Don't really want to start with that today. I must have had this basket in a teaching class. <laughs> Here we go. So this is cotton sliver, a little bit the worse for wear. There we go. Um, of a natural brown. So we do what's called a cotton join. We lay the thread over the sliver. So we gotta mix it up here. I want this wheel to rotate clockwise. Okay, so I might nudge the quill to help it start. And I'm pinching the thread onto the fiber. And notice I'm not trying to move anything yet. I'm letting a fair bit of twist build up here. Um, I should mention also, I have my wheel on its highest ratio, the little um, uh, disc that drives the main wheel. Um, that is right up at the outer edge. It's up here. It's not down here. And it has grabbed now, so you can see to begin with, I'm just doing some shorter strokes to try to make sure I've got a good yarn connection there to that leader. Okay. And the thread ends right there and my cotton begins right there. A little bit of a lump, but that's okay. That's the join to the leader. Now, you spin cotton typically with a long draw. I like to have a, it's really nice. I feel real privileged to have a two-handed long draw on a charka or a support spindle. Um, I've got one hand on the spindle and, and or on the charka and one hand on the fiber and I have to do a one-handed long draw. Um, with two-handed long draw, um, I can pinch. My lower hand can pinch to stop letting twist in and give me something to tug against when I want to draft. Okay, And the basic idea behind long draw is that the thin spots are yarn and the thick spots aren't. So I can actually tug and have the thick spots get thinner. Okay. But you always want to keep adding twist as you do that. Otherwise, your thin spots stop being yarn as well, and then everything falls apart. Now, when you've got it where you like in terms of the um, thickness and the lumps worked out and things like that, you want to do some more treadles until you feel this hand sort of move a little bit toward the tip. And that tells you you've built up a lot of twist here because you really do want cotton to have a lot, a lot of twist. You don't want to see an opening if you were to ply them back. I'm not sure if you can see that well in the video. You don't want to see an opening at the bottom because that means your cotton's going to fall apart when you ply it. Okay? Cotton wants a lot of twist. <laughs> okay, now I'm ready to wind on. You see my hands way up here. Um, so what I'm going to do is reverse the direction of the wheel. If I can make it go backwards. There you go. To undo the barber pull. And then I'll hold. Now go clockwise. And I'm going to hold this finger down here to back and forth wind the yarn on up and down there. And then spin again. You know, and the scale on this is so small. I know it can be challenging to see um, what's going on when we're not in person and not with close-ups. Okay, another length and then build up the twist in that until I'm happy with it. Okay, and then unwind, go the other direction to unwind, bring my hand down here, go clockwise again, wind it on, and I'm just letting it go up and down, down here at the base. And I'll gradually build up there you go. Um, and fill that quill. Once it's full, I would wind it off onto usually a weaving bobbin for me. Lately, I've been doing a lot of, um, my goal is to do a lot of weaving with cotton singles. Um, and also winding it onto a, a weaving bobbin. Oops, oh, lost my end there. See, that's what happens when you talk and spin at the same time. <laughs> it's okay. I get to show you a join. Okay, keep going. There we go. Find where the end was. There we go. Ah, see, it was pretty long too. So why don't I make it easier on myself? Add the finishing twist here to this length. Come on. 
Here we go. Unwind, wind it on. Now, um, I've practiced for years getting adept at making my wheel go the direction I want, knowing where to stop my treadle so that when I start again, my wheel goes the right direction. That is something that can take some time to master. Okay, so I realize I'm making it look easy here. And notice the join. I, I didn't even talk you through it. I lay the yarn on top of the fiber. Okay? I add some twist until I start feeling it grab under my thumb. And then I can start pulling out to see if it joined. And it had joined. Oops, and I pulled out too far there. It had joined, so I was ready to spin again. And I usually do start with delicate little tugs here. And remember, we have maybe a half inch staple length here. And then once I feel more confident, I start letting that distance between my hands increase. And then I'm off and doing a long draw again. I tell you, long draw feels, it's delightful. Now I've got a few lumps in this that I didn't manage to work out. So I can stop and give it some tugs up here until I've distributed the twist enough that those thick spots aren't yarn. And as I said, once I get there, I want to slow, oops slowly keep adding twists. And here I am breaking things for you guys. That's okay, we'll do another join. <laughs> there we go. And actually the other point I wanted to make is because of those lumps, I'm gonna turn around the end that I'm spinning from because I might have a more bumpy end. Um, cotton often spins one way smoother than the other way. Yeah, see that's much better. I'm not getting the lumps now. I mean, that's due to the directionality of the carding machine it was put through. Some of them aren't directional and uh, some of them are. Okay. So finish the twist off. Feel that little tug in my hand coming toward the, the quill and then undo it. Oops. See, and I'm not, I'm not perfect about reversing my direction. There we go. And then get going the right direction again, clockwise. Yeah, voice activated spinning wheels. <laughs> and then you see I wound it down until I've got four to six inches here. Sometimes I'll try to make it longer so I can just stay leaning back like if I'm watching TV or something. But um, you know, when I'm with my spinning buddies, which um, we don't get to do much these days except over Zoom, I'm, I'm more likely to make it short and lean forward and pick it up. Because you know, I can do that and talk. <laughs> So there you have it, cotton on the new pocket wheel quill. I'm loving it. Yeah. I love quills in general for spinning cotton. I'm not a fan of bobbin spun cotton because it's hard for me. <laughs> and as one of my good friends said, why spin cotton on a bobbin when you've got a quill? Yeah, or even a charco. Um, you use the tools you have, right? So this is how we make it work. Thank you.